Good morning. Welcome to the Barn Sunday Morning Services. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, and good morning, everybody. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. Uh, it's a nice day in LA, huh? Yes. Very nice. Yesterday was really nice. I started to go to the beach. It's a good day to go for a run. For a run? Yes. I did that. I did. I got up early. I was surprised and went for a run. Wow. At the beach. No, I just couldn't lay down. Normally, I stay in bed late on Saturdays, but I couldn't do it. It was too nice outside, and so now I'm so sore I can barely move. <laughs> huh? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to count them. <laughs> At the park, it says if you go around like three times and a half or something three point something time, then you've done a mile or something. But I, I don't have sense enough to add it up. <laughs> I just hope for the best. <laughs> um, anybody remember the instructions for this week? Something I gave you to do all week, and then we'll talk about it today. Who remember? Oh, good. All of the holy people. You remember, Patrick? I remember the question. I don't know if it's the same as the instructions. What, was the, what were the instructions? I don't know. I remember the question. What was the question? Um, what does it, <laughs> it had to do with praying without ceasing, and what does that mean? Oh, yeah. What was the instruction? I don't remember if there was a different instruction or not. Yeah, so that means you didn't do it. Apparently not. Isn't that amazing? Make sure you make a big donation today. Do I need to do an instruction and a question? That's a little bit heavy on my <laughs> workload there. The question was on the radio. Right. The instruction was in the church service. I failed then. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, what were the instructions? Well, to, to pray without ceasing. Right. Right. Okay. I, I didn't remember that, but I, I do that anyway, so I, I didn't I kinda let go of it and just did it anyway. Oh, okay. So I mean I see it as praying. I think I don't know if we agreed on what it was, but just being constantly aware of the presence all the time in everything you do. And the meditation helps that. Oh, okay. How do you come up with that? You know for sure that that's right? N no. You, you're not sure. No, that. I think you ha you had <clears throat> issue with that, and someone else mentioned it too. So I'm oh. interested to know what your oh, okay. take was, because I didn't get a chance to listen to your show. I can't get it on my my Android anyway. But you can get it on your iPad, iPhone. I don't have an iPhone. So. You can get it on your on your website. I mean, yeah, on your if computer. Yeah, if I do, if I'm there, yeah, I'm out running oh. around. I got it with me though. Oh, you so can. Maybe you nice don't have an iPhone. No. You got to come up. You got to step it up. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's very I don't quaint. even have one myself. <laughs> I still quaint. have my old phone. All I want to do is receive calls and to call back. That's it. I don't, I don't know how to do all that other stuff. Uh -huh. I should learn, though. Well, I have to have this iPhone. You get on Android. But she just. Well, I couldn't get mine on, on it. I'm sorry. It, it said, go, at the website, it said get the Winamp, that software that would help it, but I, it won't download, so. It, it, Doug will show you today how to do it. Okay, great. Uh, I have Doug my phone show. with me. That'd be great. Yeah, he'll show you. Uh, last Thank week, you. the, the uh, we talked. This week, it is about praying without ceasing. That's what we want to talk about. First Thessalonians five seventeen. And again, I want to remind you that the reason I bring these things up for you to do is because I want you to become aware of yourself, to pay attention to yourself and to get to know yourself, because the only way you're gonna know the truth is to know thyself. And a lot of people don't know themselves. I'm discovering myself, and it's amazing what I didn't know, and I thought that I knew. You know, I spent, up until the last 25 years, I spent all my life thinking I knew what the Bible was saying because I understood the definition to the words of the Bible. You know, if it says, pray without ceasing, for example, then you say, okay, well, I know what ceasing means. It means don't stop, all right? And so it must mean that all the time I need to be praying, but I, 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 I thought to myself, I can't be praying all the time 
because I'm going to be with a crowd, I'm going to be at work, and, you know, how am I going to be praying all the time, right? And then uh, someone said, well, some years ago, someone said, well, what he mean is you pray in tongues. You ever heard that? Praying in tongues? You, you heard of it at least, right? And, and, and what that is, is that you just be mumbling it out, making a, a weird noise without words, and supposedly God knows what you're talking about. You have no clue. And, but I said, well, I can't do that at work either because I used to work for a hospital in a medical transcribing department, and there was a Christian woman in there who used to pray in tongues, and she would be at work while we, working, we were working, and she'd be making that noise. Like, and we thought it was weird. We were like, we were cracking up, right? But that didn't work for me. And so I, I, I finally understand what it means. And so when I ask you to do these things, it's not because I want to present myself as being smarter and all that kind of stuff. I just see how revelation is being revealed to me and it's in all of us to receive that and I want you to have that. So that's why I ask you to do these things. It's not a contest. It's not a test. You don't get an A. You don't fail. You learn about yourself. Either you learn or you don't learn, but eventually you will learn if you keep wanting to learn. So no such thing as failure. And it's not a test. And I hope that when I'm up here talking, I'm not like a, a pastor or anything like that to you, but a witness to what is possible. All right? Last week, it was about I am that I am. Remember that? Last week? And so I got, I received just truckloads of emails and Facebook comments on it, phone calls about it, and I heard very, very interesting things about I am that I am. And uh, one guy called me up and he was like struggling with it. He was like, wow, oh, I am that I am. I, I, and he read the scripture and it says that, down further it says that I'm your father just as I am Abraham father, Isaac and all those guys. So this guy thought it meant I'm your father. And he was like, no, it means I'm your father. And I said, well, we don't have to argue about it. That's what you think it is, and so shall it be. It's not like a contest. I said, I don't see it that way, even though God is our father, and he's the same father as he was with Abraham and all those guys. I said, but that's not the way I see I am that I am. And so he was like struggling with it for a week. And one morning, um, he called me at my office and said that um, he was on his way to work, and he had asked God, you know, God, let me see what that means because I can't let this thing go. And if I knew what it meant, I should be able to move on. And he, he couldn't move on from it. I am that I am. And so he just asked God to let him see it. And God allowed him. He said he was driving to work one morning, almost at work. And all of a sudden, God allowed him to see that I am that I am mean I'm with you. He even heard the voice of God say, I'm with you. It was revealed to him. And he said that it was so overwhelming, he couldn't even go inside of his job. He just sat there in the parking lot at work and just boohooed. Once that revelation came about I am that I am. And that's the experience that I want you to have. If you want to know the truth and you continue to look within, it will be revealed to you. And once, once revelation is revealed to you, then you're going to know the difference between learned knowledge and revelation. You would know, then you won't be deceived by what Satan is trying to tell you in your head. You won't be deceived by that because most people do not recognize the voice of God. They recognize the voice of Satan, but they think it's the voice of God. So whenever you read something, whether it's in the Bible or any other book, Satan is defining what it means, and most people think that that's revelation, and it's not. And it's not making you free, it's putting you more in bondage than anything else because he deceived you to make you believe that you have something you don't have. Isn't that amazing? And I have to tell you, once you get hung up on words, it's over for you. Words can get it out of the way and destroy us. 
and most people are being destroyed by words in their, in their imagination. They believe the lie. I was talking to, and then I'll take some questions, but I was talking to, uh, because I do counseling, I talk to a lot of people all the time. And uh, I was talking to a, a guy who was a drug addict, and he's been fighting for years to overcome being a drug addict, and uh, at least for a year or two. And I, I've been telling him, I said, look, all you have to do is just be still and know the truth. Let God separate you from what you're feel, thinking and feeling. Stop identifying with that so you can repent and then you can just naturally walk away from the drug, right? And so I was counseling with him this week and he was like, no, that's not going to work. I, I have so much pain. I can't take this pain anymore. I want to overcome this. And so what he's going to do is have surgery. Apparently, they're saying now that they can put you to sleep and, and do something to your system to flesh out all of this, the drug stuff. And when you wake up from your sleep, you're supposed to be free from it. But I told him, I said, that's not going to work because the drug is not the problem. It's the, the judgment of yourself and others that the problem is the problem. It's a spiritual thing. And you're connected to... You listen to the voice of the devil. And he makes you feel guilty. He makes you feel this way or that way. And you use the drugs to try to run from the guilt. But he's like, no, I'm so tired of this. I want to get over. You ever been in that situation where you keep doing the same thing over and over? And you keep telling yourself, you know, I just want to get over this. And then you get mad about not being able to get over it. <laughs> and you start having guilt. And then you stop for a while. You feel really good about yourself, right? Then the urge come back, and then you're in it again, and once you do it, you can't believe you did it, and you become frustrated. Anybody ever had that? If you haven't had that, you have not lived. <laughs> because that's what they mean. And I know what made people feel, go through that now. I understand that. I'll tell you in a minute. I had another, uh, another one I wanted to tell you about. I, I, I talked to... Uh, a, a, a man and his wife, and the wife has a, a, a lot of guilt, and she has so much guilt that nothing works for her because she doesn't believe that anything will work. She'll try the prayer, she'll try this and try that, but because it, she thinks it's not working right away, then she says, oh, this doesn't work. But I, I, she is judging herself, and as a result of judging herself, Satan got her, right? And so the husband has been trying to tell her, well, you know what? You got to stop judging yourself as you have with other people because it's the same thing. You get the same conflict and stuff like that. And, um, and, but it's so hard, as the husband was telling me, it's so hard for her to do it that it's just driving him nuts too. There's nothing worse than living with a man or a woman, if you're married, that lives in their imagination, who lives in their imagination. There's nothing worse than that. It's like living with hell because you can never convince them of anything. Have you noticed that? I have. It's rough. One, and then one other story that was so interesting this week. I talked to a man. I was counseling with him. And uh, he's up in age now. And he worked very, very hard to make sure his family had everything. Uh, the wife didn't have to work raised our kids, they all went through college, they're doing very well, and now he's up in age, and his wife is gone, and he finds out that all of his kids hate him. And what, what happened was the wife turned the kids away from him while he was out working, and he, because he didn't understand, he didn't know what was going on, um, all that he said that that was, and it's interesting, but once the kids became adults, they moved away. You know how you move away, you go off to school, then you settle somewhere. When, when all the kids became adults, the wife left home too. And the husband is just there alone, right? And all of his kids hate him. And he said that there was one kid who at one time was on his side, can agree and understood what was going on. And when the wife moved in with them, 
Now that kid has turned against him. And I said, so how do you feel about all this? What are, you, what are your thoughts? He said, I wish I was dead. And I understand that feeling. To lose all your kids like that after you worked so hard to make sure that they had a good life. And, that, and now they're adults and you can't enjoy them because the wife has turned them away from you. It is like death. And I don't think a lot of people understand that men suffer from losing their children. They really do. It's real painful. I remember when my first son, his mother, wouldn't let him come back to live with me in California. I didn't think I was going to make it through that. It was like, I was like, it was like death. It was like a best friend died or something, you know. It was hard. And I understood then what fathers go through when they lose their children. And so I say that to say, wives who are causing these children to turn away from their fathers, I would repent really fast so that God can help change that situation because if you don't, you're going to suffer for that. You really will. Just imagine, it's like you turn your kids away from God when you turn them away from the fathers. And the kids end up suffering anyway. One other thing I want to tell you, you got to stop, you don't have to. You could suffer and just die. But <laughs> I recommend you get over being hung up on words. And that's what's driving us, one of the things. Because words are defined as certain things. For example, sin. You ever heard that word before? Yes. Somebody, you've heard it, right? Yes. What does sin mean to you, John? Um, when did you first hear the word sin, if you can remember that? Well, from going to church. Uh, as a kid? Yes, as a kid. Yeah. And, um, and what would, go ahead. It basically means uh, being disobedient to God. Being disobedient to God. And how do you be disobedient to God? Well, doing things you kind of know that are wrong, and uh, you're doing them anyway. Did that worry have an effect upon you? Um, it had an effect in the sense that uh, uh, when I was doing something wrong, uh, I, I knew it was uh, sin. It was just wasn't wrong. It was sin also. And how did it affect you? When, let's say you did something wrong, you sinned. And well, once you did it, what would you feel and think after that? Well, you, you, I kind of felt like um, that I was never going to be able to overcome this sin, that I was going to be stuck for the rest yeah. of my life. Yeah, that guilt and everything, huh? Yes. Yeah. Had not you been taught that word, you would not have had that. It's that word that Satan used against you, especially when you want to be a Christian and you want to live right and do the right thing. And you have been told that sin uh, goes against God, that is wrong and going to hell, right? And so you go out and you try not to sin, but you end up sinning. And then you judge yourself based on that word, sin, that Satan start using that word against you. Oh, you thought you were a Christian. Now you sin. You have sinned. You know, it just, and it just, it brings you down. And then once you're brought down, you almost want to give up on God. You know, like, I'm never going to get over this. You start to become doubtful that you can get over it. I, I've tried. I've done all I can do. Like this, this guy on the drug. I mean, you should have heard him. He has no faith that he can get over it because that word is working against him. He's he been taught that it's a sin. And it is sin, but it never was meant to, you, to be used against us to bring that kind of guilt on. Satan used that against us. That's why we have to get away from words. Yes. And even to this day, I still have doubt that I can overcome all, yeah. all of my sins. Yeah. And because you are not aware of what's going on, it's Satan who come to you and whisper to you, you're never going to get better. Look how long you've been sinning. You, you stayed away from this one time before, and now you're back at it again. You're just a failure. And you don't hear his voice or recognize that he's using that word against you. But if you were, were not locked on two words, it wouldn't happen. You would know that is wrong without judging yourself with words, and then you can overcome.
I'm telling you, we've been so set up with religion and now, some people intentionally did it, others didn't know what they were doing because they were taught too. I am realizing, it's so weird. I wish you could know me to know how silly I am, how uneducated I am, how, how it's amazing that I'm up here saying this because I didn't study different religions and things like that. You know, I just grew up picking cotton and hoping for the best. So I don't know different religions and I don't, I'm not into the Bible like a whole lot of folks are. And, and these things are being given to me to know and they are in you to know too. If you just look within, you just start seeing, you start breaking away from all these things that are holding you in bondage, fear and all that kind of stuff. But you gotta be able to recognize the right voice. This voice is gonna hurt you up here. This one will save you in your belly. The one for revelation. And a lot of people hung up on all kinds of words, and that's what keeps Satan, uh, allows Satan to control them. I saw this hand here, and then, and then I come to you. Right, Robin, look at me. Right here. I know, but look at me, go right there. I, I wanted to ask about the elderly guy that took care of his kids and the wife. Uh, what is it, his sin is that he overdid it? Um, you know, he did too much, taking care of the kids, making sure they all went to college. One thing for sure, had he known to spend more time with them, you know, was he, you know, a man has to be out working and earn his way, especially if his wife is out working too. But had he gone home afterward and talked to his children about what was going on, he would have been able to deal with it way before now when it's really the adults. So yes, he should have spent more time. Okay. But you know what is beautiful about what's happening to him in his suffering? He is doing a whole lot of self-examination and he's realized a lot about himself, about this guy said to me, and I hadn't even introduced this to him at all. He said he realized he married his mother because he started thinking about his father's situation and his wife has treated him in the same manner that his father did. But he used to think that his mother was the good one and the father was the bad one. But he's seeing now what really went on. And he's trying to tell other people about it, but they think he's the bad guy. His suffering is waking him up. Okay. It really is. So but is yeah, that like he, generational sin? I'm sorry? Is that like generational yes. sin? Okay. Absolutely. That's another thing you're going to see, too, when you wake up. You're going to see it is generational. I see my first son going through exactly what I went through. He still struggles with that. And now he and his wife have separated, and now his son will have to go through the same thing. Isn't that amazing? But if we wake up, we wouldn't have to repeat these things over and over and over again. It could end. But it's like it takes an arm and a leg to wake people up, for people to wake up. This is why prayer without ceasing is so important. If you could, and we're gonna get into that, I wanna read a scripture for you. If you could learn to pray without ceasing, then you can overcome anything. It really, really can. I'll give you some examples in a minute. Uh, right here. Thank you. You know, um, while you were speaking about words, um, I realized that words are like symbols that represent meaning. And this meaning, when it's directed at you, whether it's sin or choice or whatever word comes at you, when, that, when it gets processed, all it comes down to is feelings. Yes. You know that the words trigger some kind of feelings. It does. And if you don't like those feelings, you run from the situation and you go the other direction because we're right. not about pain here. We're about well, at least I am. I'm not about suffering pain. I'm about, you know, being calm and, and, and a little pleasure here and there. But pain is bad, you know, mostly. And so when words kind of trigger, like, oh, there may be pain coming, you know, sin, that, br that brings on feelings of pain that yeah. I haven't overcome things, then I want to run, go in the other direction, go any other direction but that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what does it mean to pray without ceasing? Did you think about that this week? I did, and um, 
It doesn't seem like I'm able to pray without ceasing. Like, I'll get caught up in things. What does it mean to you to pray without ceasing? I don't know. Like I said, again, I wasn't able to do test. it. it's not a test. I want everybody to just really, I want you to know. All right, so you, don't worry about, let, don't let Satan try to make you give the right answer or the learn answer or, you know. Because you, you can know this for yourself, and I want you to know. I want you to know. I think what it means to me is, is um, um, uh, being kind of conscious of what you're doing, but that doesn't always go with what my intentions are. And so I'll drop the praying to do what my intention is. Does that make sense? Meaning that if there is something that comes along while you're praying and you shouldn't be doing it, you stop praying and do it anyway? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, have it mercy. seems easy to do too. It seems easy if to do. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I needed you, Lord. I need you now. Well, that's good. Just suffer then. Keep doing that. All right. <laughs> Thanks. And how do you feel once you do that? Put prayer aside so you can do your do. Yeah. Well, you know, it comes down to choice. Nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. It's kind of cowboy kind of thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, or maintenance. It's kind of maintenance yeah. looking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, oh, you made me lose my thought. Oh, uh, I forgot what I asked you, too. What did I ask him? That was a general How thing. does he feel when you put it aside for oh, yeah, yeah. so then, he can do his due? Then I'm like, oh, man. So you made this choice to abandon something good for something evil. Now how do you feel? Oh, and yeah. that doesn't feel good. Right. And so, you listen to that lie. Yeah. Because you didn't make that choice. You were influenced. Influence means you're still making a choice. No. Don't we have a problem with words here? Yeah. Yeah. To me, to me, influence means you're still making a choice. You may be influenced. Someone may be in your ear saying, oh, go ahead, do it. But you are, at least I see, think that I'm seeing both sides and that I'm still choosing the wrong side. Oh, you think you are, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why would you choose to do wrong? Um, Short-term glory, um, uh, <laughs> you know, pleasure, things like that. One thing that you're going to understand once you really get into the, the spirit of life, get over the religious of life. Religious is a good thing because it tells us we need to become spiritual, I think. But once you get into the spirit of life, it's going to, it's something else. Believe me, it's something else. I'm so disappointed. Am I, am, I want to say disappointed. I don't know if I'm disappointed. I may be lying. But I think it's something else that we've been so dumbed down like this, that, that somebody took us and defined everything for us to cause us to live by words, and all we do is just live in a box. We live so limited, limitedly. It is it's sad. God is like a big old God, right? And he is our father, and he loves us. We should be living like a big old life. But no, people are suffering and hating one another and insecure and have fear and lying and cheating and unforgiving and breaking up and losing friendship and destroying their children and jealous and gossiping and I mean because you've been so dumbed down with words you're living in a box you're living in hell but Christ came and made the big old life possible now you're making me want to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> so what for the mic I said, now you're making me want to kill myself. <laughs> I'm not living a big life when it's possible and, and maybe easy. It is it's effortlessly. It's effortlessly. Isn't that right, Ronda? I'm mean, I saying it right. Without effort. Effortless. effortless. It is. It really, and for the weird thing about this, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring or the next moment. For me to be saying it is something else. You got to realize when I was growing up, I, I, 
I'm sure I looked at the Bible, but I rarely read the Bible. I went to church, but I just went, you know what I'm saying? Because we had to go. My grandmother made us go to church. So we went to church, but I didn't grow up reading the Bible. Even though I looked through it at time, because if I had it, she would smack me upside my head, like open up your Bible in the church, right? But so I didn't grow up reading the Bible. I didn't grow up uh, looking at other religions. The only religion I knew about was Baptist. And then I heard about non-denomination Catholics as I got older. But I didn't do any research on religion. There has been something that's always been with me that made me want to know God and wanted to be, it caused me to want to, to be a son of God. That is more important to me than anything else on earth and has always been. So I've always had this thing where I would, you know, talk to God about things or ask questions about things, but I never did get into the Bible thing. And you guys are into the Bible. So for me to be up here saying this instead of you is something else. You guys are smarter than me. You really are. I bet you I'm the only one in the room pick cotton, right? Who picked cotton? See? Yeah. <laughs> Driving up to Bakerfield back, right? He stopped on the side of the road. And <laughs> 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 Let's go to our Ermes over there, Robert. Well, I saw Ermes first, then I'll come back to you. So what, Patrick? I said that's a hobby, not a job. Yeah, that's... <laughs> um, I yes. thought... I thought Martin said something interesting when you asked him about the uh, prayer without ceasing. Uh, I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. You asked him if he knew how to pray without ceasing. He says that he uh, found out that he can't pray without ceasing, but yet he says he, he found out that he can that he cannot. Oh, but yet he says he didn't know what it meant. So if you don't know what it means, how well, do you know that point. you cannot? Yeah, if you don't know what it is, how you know you can't do it? Is it? <laughs> That's a dumb question. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, how do you know you can't do it? Well, I didn't say I didn't know what it is. Maybe I gave evidence that I don't know what it oh, is. Oh, you didn't I say you didn't. I said. Oh, because I, you. He said I don't know. Because I stopped. Right. Uh, you know, uh, and, and it seems like a choice to me. I'm, I'm stopping, you know, uh, observing. Oh, did I make that, that point? That God's with me. I don't think you did. Once you wake up. You're going to see you're not in control of anything. You are not making choices. Just think about it. You know about God. You've heard about him. You want to be what he say, said for us to become, right? Why would you deliberately go against that? You, and, and then you're coming out of hell. You don't like hell. If you loved hell, you, wouldn't even, you would not be trying to come out of hell. So why would you deliberately go and sin knowing that that's not what you want to do? And how do you bring... See, there's bring, a difference between not know, knowing that it's not good for you and um, um, the, the temporary benefits that you get from going back into sin. Oh, uh, whatever. Let me go to, back to Ermes. I want to ask him a question there. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I want to fellowship first. Uh, did you do it? You know, I, um, did you I pray without ceasing this week? Did I pray? Um, first of all, I don't know what that means. So I asked. That's what I realized. That I don't know what it means to pray without ceasing. When did you realize you didn't know what it means? Right now or no, the week? throughout the week. And did you try to pray without ceasing? I asked God to show me how to pray without ceasing. And what did he say? Well, the only thing that I, that you I didn't found, the only thing I found out was that <laughs> I don't know what it means. Uh huh. And it was apparent the depths of what I don't know. So God was like, go sit down. You don't know what it means. Yeah, heart. basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that gonna... was interesting. Just to know that what I don't know. And I, I don't know what it means to pray that. So prior to being aware of that this week, did you know that you didn't know? No. I thought I knew how to pray. Oh, okay. So I was doing the meditation and all that stuff. See, this is why you got it. This is what, that's why I give these things out. Because you're going to know, see what you don't know. And all along, you thought you did know it, all right? Um, yes, sir. Oh, and then I come to you. Oh, and then here. And uh, give me a moment. I'm sorry. Yes. To uh, uh, growing up Christian, heard that verse, and so 
praying is praying in tongues and praying like a, like a madman day and night. Yeah. And uh, then it was revealed to me that that's not what uh, praying unceasingly was. Praying unceasingly what is, it? is um, remembering that uh, there is a God. You're not him being, um, not being in your imagination, but being present in the moment. And in that way, you're, you're praying to him. And how do you know that that's what it is? Uh, it just kind of came to me, you know. And again, uh, it's not a test. Yeah, because the other kind of praying. I just is, want uh, you to know for yourself. The other kind of praying, uh, praying with your mind and your thoughts is not really, you're, not, you're just, uh, you're mumbling. You're not really praying to God. You're, you're repeating. I grew up Catholic, so you, you go to the rosary beads. And it's not really praying. You're not praying to him. Um, but when you're present and you're, you're still, you're here where God is in the moment. He's, he's right here, right now. I, um, Not in my imagination or thoughts or playing, you know. He's here in this moment right now. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, too, about the other praying. Yeah. I do understand. But I think it's a mistake to even define that as not working because some people can pray that way and God hear them and answer their prayers and bring them in, allow them to come in. I, for me, those things just didn't work for me. Got it. And so even that is a judgment that you're making because somebody may, may just cry out to God with words, oh, oh God, help me. Like this man is saying, he asked God to let me see what I am that I am is. So he used words to ask right. for that and he was able to receive it. Not that praying so is, is we bad. Can't even, now, I may be wrong, but I can't see how we can even make a decision about that because it's really between God and the person. And that's why we have to know ourselves so that we won't be condemning everything else because it may work for somebody. God is God, and God doesn't make decisions the way we make decisions. And, but some people won't pray with words if they hear, well, pray with, praying with words doesn't work. And so they'll want to cry out to God, but they won't do it because the mind won't let them because they heard that it doesn't work. That makes sense? I, I do pray that way. I do pray with words. I, yeah. I do, you know, I do pray that way, the old fashioned way, uh, you know, your hands held together on your knees. I pray that way. I pray every way I, I think I, that I can. Yeah. Um, and, and the other topic uh, about words to see how words change. Um, Make, don't, don't, because of time, just, I, I can't, I know you're a teacher and you go on and on and mm -hmm. make uh, it short. Well, that um, you hear I am that I am. Uh, well, I, I looked that up and in the ancient Greek, it talks about that I am that I am. It says the very same thing, but differently. I shall be who I shall be. Oh, and okay. that's kind of the way they, they mentioned that in the, in the ancient Greek. Yeah, the Bibles are changing generation after generation. That's so, a problem. Too. So the words. So that's why words can mess us up. Yeah, the words you know today yeah. aren't the same words that they use right. thousands of years ago. And, and um, I mean, yeah, weekly, I got that words point. are changing. Yeah. Let me get this thing. I don't mean to be rude. I just got them. I'm looking just, at the clock. I was just going to quickly And then I'm going to come to you. Like being aware all day, uh, what you just said, I mean, that's basically what I'm talking about. And I, like, I'll be sitting at my desk without any plans at all, and wordlessly, you know, it's more the attitude is, thy will be done. I will not struggle. Of myself, I can do nothing. And the next thing you know, I'm just handling things. And it's wordless. Yeah. But it's, a, it, I don't hear, pick up the phone, but all of a sudden it'll come to me. Oh, and I pick up the phone and I'm calling someone. So it's not even like you're planning anything. I mean, now I don't know if that's praying without ceasing, but constantly being aware, that's what I mean more. So I just thought I'd. So what you're saying, and again, it's a fellowship. That's all it is. Leave yourself open so God can reveal. Yeah, so what you're saying, when you pray without ceasing, um, you, I'm sorry, tell me again what happens well, when you pray without ceasing. Well, this is just me being aware of him and allowing him to tell me, giving me his laundry list, not me giving him mine. Oh, okay. So it's just a matter of being aware of it, but I am moved and it is wordless. That's the thing. If you're hearing words, you're talking to the wrong guy. Yeah. But all, sometimes I will find myself on the floor because I'm given instructions 
just to w fall down and worship. And I didn't get this. It just happened. Do you do that at it work? Uh, well, I work at home. So. Oh, I see. Oh, thank <laughs> God for that, huh? You know, and I, I just... Be like, call the police. Yeah, right. Oh, my husband, I mean, he's never caught me in the act or anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to hide it. It just hasn't happened when he's around. It's I really... used to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. No, not 3, I'm sorry. I used to get up at like 4 or 5, 5 in the morning to pray in town. And I lived in an apartment building. And there were people living above me and around me, right? And the manager was right across the hall. And he was saying to me, when he saw me during the day, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what, what are you doing over there out at North? And I'm like, you know, man, I think I'm praying up here. But, <laughs> so that's why I say, I hope you're not falling out at the office there. Huh. Oh, I'll have to think about that. I'll get back to you later. <laughs> okay. Let me just ask you real fast. What has it done for you to pray in tongue? How does it help you? I feel like uh, I'm, I'm not as lost. I'm more connected. Um, I, f I feel like he's with me. To pray with us, okay. Yes, sir. And the reason I'm asking because we're witnessing now. That's all it is, all right? Just relax. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, first of all, before I answer the question, uh, I just want to say if we could wish uh, Diane good morning. David says good morning. She's watching us right now out through the computers, and she's probably going to call in with a question. Who is Diane? So, Diane's the uh, oh, one of the girls. Oh, last week? Yes. Yeah, oh, I see. She's okay. sick, so she can't. She wanted to make it here. Oh, good. She's not able to. She's, okay. She's Hi, having, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next Sunday. I miss you. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah. I wonder if they were going to show up today, so. Yeah, I, okay. I, I wanted to bring her here. Uh, she's having a lot of problems, a lot of issues. And yeah, okay. So, uh, well, anyway, I told her she could, it was, it was almost like coming here, watching, and she can call in. Well, too. we're not live right now. Oh, what's it? oh, we're not live? No, we're recording it, but we just play it. We're going to go live oh, okay. later I, on. Oh, I thought it was live. No, okay. not at this point. All right. Well, anyway, misinformation. So did you pray without ceasing? Uh, no, I ceased and ceased and ceased. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ceased all over the place. I cease more than I pray. And why is that? Uh, lack of commitment. Uh, I guess uh, I'm too wrapped up in reacting to all this stuff. It's, yeah. It sort of, uh, in some ways, it sort of reminds me of a dream that I had years and years ago. Uh, back when I was, I know I don't think I was fishing at the time, but I remember I was, I dreamt I was splashing around in the water and there were all these big sharks all over the place that came around but it was fun in the water but then these i saw some of these dorsal fins and then i thought my god there's a bunch of sharks here they're gonna eat me alive and i started panicking and um, uh, i remember my father came on it was supposed to be a fishing boat but it was kind of like a, a spaceship with one of his deck hands and they came zooming around and saying uh, Oh, wow. He goes, uh, uh, the sharks dispersed. And they said, you want to step on the platform, you know, and get out of the water? I said, well, I did. But now that there's not so many sharks around, I'd like to splash in the water some more. And then I remember my father said, so you want to remain unconscious? Well, OK. Uh, but I don't know if I'll be yeah. able to get to you in time next time. And then he took off. And then, and then I remember in the dream that uh, sitting there in the water, feeling sort of stupid and also resenting my father for playing the reality to me of the sharks. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's amazing, man. I like yeah. that. That's, what what that's, does it mean? What do you think it means to pray without ceasing? I think it means that it's like throughout life we keep needing little course corrections. Moment by moment, we, we might be driving, might be walking, chewing on food, just in ordinary conversation stuff, and we see what's from time to time we have glimpses of of uh, insight to what's going on in our head, how we're reacting to it, how we're hooked up or entangled in something. And we have, during those glimpses of insight, uh, a little clarity that we can milk, we can milk the situation for what it is in a negative way, or we could kind of like pull out and detach somewhat and basically do what our father wants us to do. Why do you think that's what it means? Why do you think it would work like that? Uh, that's how I see it. I, I, 
I don't have any fancy explanations. Oh, okay. And so if that is true, and I'm not saying it's not, but if it's true, why don't you commit to that? That's a good question. Uh, I like swimming in the water as long as they're, the sharks aren't all that big. <laughs> As long as the sharks seem to be smaller than me, it seems to be pretty jolly to be splashing around the water. Oh, okay. Uh, That's interesting. So you don't want to be free. Hmm. I want the benefits of freedom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've, in some ways, I feel almost kind of like some of the um, poor in America where they, they want the money, but they don't want to work for it. Right. <laughs> So they, do, they, do, want wealth. they yeah. do want wealth, you know. That's an amazing dream you had, though. It really is. I, I wish I got the point. <laughs> the point is, if you don't wake up, you're going to die. The shocks are going to get you. Yes. And you're going to, when you are not praying, you leave yourself open so the shocks can get you. Yeah, whether you see the sharks or not. Right. They're Definitely. there. They're there with mouths open. You better listen to your father. I, I need to listen to that father up there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Real fast right here. Then I want to read this. Anybody have any questions about this? Oh, you do? Okay. Okay. Before I answer, uh, answer your question about what, uh, whether I pray while ceasing, there was one. Uh, somebody gave me a question. Uh, my roommate's father asked me, why do I come to uh, go out of my way to, uh, to your church where there's still a lot of churches close to where I live? I answered him. Because this is the only church that I can talk to people like uh, people like you like in this matter, and instead of being talked down to. Yes, sir. Yes, I understand. Uh -huh. I um, as for praying well. Did you pray without ceasing this week? I believe I did because to me praying well uh, without ceasing is just a form of awareness of yourself and your relation uh, relation to the moment. What did it do for you to pray without ceasing? Keep me, keep me aware of what I can do and and what I cannot uh, cannot do and how what to um and be aware of how to go, uh, uh, be aware of uh, how to go about uh, about my life and moment by mo moment so I don't make um, make a mess of everything as I usually do. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Let me tell you her question here. Uh, Look, right there, yeah, right there. Yeah, my, <laughs> my question is, it, is it basically as simple as being conscious all the time of what you're doing and what you're saying and how you feel about something and how you react to something? Good question. I'm about to answer that. Okay. I, I just don't, and the reason I don't want to just always answer things for you guys because I want God to reveal it to you. Because once he reveals it to you, no change in it. You never have doubt. No one can change your mind about it or anything. Really, I'm telling you. Once revelation is there, no doubt. Crystal clear. It's life. It's like a lamp unto your feet. It's something else to get revelation. It's something else to know that it's almost weird, like, to know that there is a living being within us to guide us, to instruct us, to love us, to whatever with us, right? While also there's this dark guy that want to guide us and instruct us and destroy us. These two things going on. That's amazing to me. And we think that we can control it. We think that we, are, you know, we have something to do with it, and, uh, and we don't. And it's funny, too, even though it doesn't work what we think we are and what we think we can do, we still try to make it work anyway. I like dummies. This is why somebody, what did somebody call us fools or something in the Bible? Something. Uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about this one a lot. You know, increasingly these questions come up and I'm taking them more seriously. Good. Honestly, um, when they first came up and you were first asking, I, I didn't treat them seriously. I thought they were kind of gimmicks. And, uh, you know, just give somebody something new for the next week to think about or chew on. I didn't really see the, 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 that you really had something behind what you were saying. And they really, in order to go through the, what you're talking about, it really ha can make a change in you. Yes. 
So I can hear Satan now telling you that too. Oh, this is just full of gimmicks, no. <laughs> Go about your way. You're like, okay. And just believe a lie. Yeah. So the first, the first one I started thinking about it, I, I kind of think, uh, okay, well, you know, be in the moment. We've heard all that. You know, be here, all that. Be in the presence of God. And that has something to it, but I noticed that I tried to pray like that for many years, and it really didn't help me very much. In the sense, um, I didn't get any benefit until I started to pay attention to what I was thinking and doing, and yes. just kind of like paying attention to myself. Yes, sir. So that was kind of my first understanding this week of it. But I just want to throw in something else that happened last night that I think was kind of interesting. That I, I just went and sat down to pray, and I realized, you know, I, I saw this you know, light, and I saw this, um, you know, I'm not trying to make it sound bigger than it was, but it, it, it you know, the thing inside you, the, the, the energy source that you have inside you, and what occurred to me at that time was that you're not praying without ceasing is something you can't do, but the source inside you is praying for you without ceasing. Yes. And I never, and exactly. I, and when I saw it, I was like, wow. There's not anything I'm doing at all, but it's just there all the time working for me and always doing the praying. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, so yes, that, sir. that was it. See, so make sure you rebuke the devil the next time he tell you that. <laughs> exactly. We're not doing it ourselves. Yeah. Exactly. Allowing yep. Allowing it to happen. Allowing it to happen. Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> Um, I, I had a, a little bit of a benefit listening to all of you guys' answers. I didn't get uh, your instruction. Right. I really enjoy your instructions, by the way. I think that that is one of your gifts, is oh, that your ability to give. The moment I started uh, coming to uh, your uh, service is that you gave these sound. And look forward to your instructions, by the way, because I, I practice them as I as realized best I later that what I'm doing is not new either, because Paul and all those guys encourage people to pray they gave them things to remember to do and to, you know, stuff like that. So it's not new. I just didn't know it until I read it mm -hmm. in the Bible. So um, I, I've never, you know, really thought it out until now that you guys are bringing it up. Everybody gave a little piece of it, I think, of the answer. Um, even uh, Martin, um, when when he was questioned yeah. by... We have about three minutes left, so... Uh, so it's, it's a disconnect, I think, uh, um, when you're uh, lulled into uh, unconsciousness and you, you're, moved, you're taken away from, from praying uh, without ceasing. And uh, you, know, you simply go back into the stillness uh, when, you, when you feel and we see that's happening. And, uh, and, that, and that, to me, by continuing to, to do that, I, 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 you know, I can foresee you reach a, a point in where you're constantly you wake up and you're aware and you're always praying without ceasing. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, real fast, uh, my friend over here a couple of weeks ago mentioned that he was uh, doing old school uh, prayer. Where you? Which friend? Uh, Martin. Yes. Oh God. And um, no. uh, for the last twenty years, I um, <laughs> pr pretty much been praying with my hands with my hands together and focus on my my fingertips and, and be aware. But you mentioned that uh, uh, you can pray you you can pray uh, all the time. You can be aware all the time. So I kind of been practicing, practicing that, and I noticed uh, a, a little difference. And sometimes when I go to pray, uh, uh, I still go back to like my hands together, and then I, I go back to, I guess, just being aware. But kind of helping me a little bit uh, uh, to, to be more, a little bit more conscious and aware. But I notice I can't stay uh, aware or conscious all the time. Right. But if you practice that, it'll change. Yes, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, practicing it that way. But it, if my friend hadn't mentioned that, I'll still be, uh, I guess, praying the old way. Right on. See, friend, you're good for something. Hopefully there's some reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. First Thessalonians 5.17. I'm going to start at 14. Be at peace among yourselves. We urge you, brothers, to admonish those who are undisciplined, encourage the apprehensive, support the weak, and be patient with one another. Make sure that people do not try to repay evil for evil. Always aim at what is best for each other and for everyone. Always be joyful. Pray constantly. 
And, and in some Bible say pray without ceasing, but pray constantly. And for all things, give thanks. Uh, this is the will of God for you in, in uh, Christ Jesus. The way I came to know this praying without ceasing thing, one morning, I'm sitting on the couch, and, and uh, it was just right after my, I pray, you know, I pray. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I have my eyes open and everything. All of a sudden, God allowed me to become aware of here in my belly area, where normally when I would pray, I would be more, like a lot of you have said, aware of the thoughts, right? But he allowed me this time to enter into my abdominal area, where the Holy Spirit dwells, by the way. And when I, when I, I'm sitting there, it just happened to me, I feel, I mean, just love and warmth and, and all this kind of stuff, right? And, and it's, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I didn't know this would happen, right? And so I, I became aware of this area. And I noticed that over the last couple of weeks or so since I've been doing that, I find myself, as John was hitting that, I practice every day to be aware of the inner area down here rather than so much up here. Because when you're aware of this area where the spirit is, you also see what's going on with the mind too, right? But the primary focus needs to be within the soul of your belly where everything is, the Holy Spirit, your nature, and everything is there, right? And in that, what I've noticed is that when situations happen, when challenges come, instead of me reacting to those things at all, because I've been practicing to be aware of that, I find it impossible to react to any challenge or something. Instead of reacting to what's happening, I go within myself. And there's, it's like love for the situation, you know, love in the midst of the situation. And also you see that things work, work out for you. And yes, you also see Satan working on your mind, trying to get you to... Um, to uh, react to the problem. He started talking to you about the situation, but you can't if you're within, you pray within. And it will be with you, and I urge you to practice being aware within all day long, all the time. And, and sometimes you will go in and out of it. You'll go back into your imagination, right? But that's okay. Just go right back into it. Become aware of your, the core of who you are, within the soul of your belly. And Patrick is right. The Holy Spirit is interceding on your behalf. And you kind of know that, too. And it is perfect peace. It's, it's everything. But when you, like even now, as I'm speaking to you, you can be aware inwardly as you're listening. And then you will not hold on to words either. Words won't uh, control you anymore. But just be aware of the soul of your belly. And see, I hate telling you that because I don't want you to go in there on your own. And I bet you most of you right now are going to go in there, right? <laughs> because God, Satan is like, go on in there now. You know. but, and, and, but just be aware of that. It is, it is something else. I received a phone call this morning, a person that just stressed out and reacted, right? And I just became aware of myself within, and I was able to give them the right words to, to, to get them to calm down. You got to practice without will. You got to practice being aware all the time. So if you're at work, and let's say you're putting a project together, you may come out of there for a minute, but as soon as you're done, go back in. Become aware again of your inner self. And, and I don't, you can't make yourself do it. But just know it needs to happen, and it will. It happened to me. That's why I don't want you to be hung up on words so that if the, if the preacher say, when you pray, put your hands together, right? And you'll spend 50 years putting your hand together. And then you're frustrated because the hand thing isn't working. You have to grow in the spirit. So don't have a mindset about anything so you can grow in the spirit. And that way you don't spend the rest of your life in one place. Locked in. That makes sense? So don't remember, don't try to hold on to anything. Don't learn. Let it be revealed to you. And I'm telling you, when things happen, uh, you deal with it differently. You feel differently about it. You, you see that somebody else is guiding you 
and that you're not in control of yourself. You, you have peace. You have it. You just have it. But you got to be aware of within. Right in the area where you breathe. Be aware of that. But you got to forgive first before you can enter in so that God can take over. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you. I appreciate the uh, participation. Thank you. For more information, to purchase a copy of this program or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411-BOND. You're already home.